Hey, how are you guys doing today? Uh, Dag here. I thought what I might do for you guys today, a little something different on the channel. I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna make a little instructional video. I'm gonna show you guys how it is that I actually make, like, all the artwork, uh, for my Let's Play channel. You know, I'm gonna let you in on all my dirty little secrets today. Uh, what we're gonna work on today is our cross between, um... Crazy Diamond from JoJo and Empoleon, Pokemon, obviously, uh, to go for our Crazy Diamond character from Platinum version. Uh, what I'll do quickly then, uh, what I... Whoops. No, you come back. No, you get back in there. Get back in there, Crazy... The video's barely started and you're already misbehaving. How dare you? Uh, what I typically like to do is uh, canvas size. It's always a good trick that you want to go a big, a nice, big, beefy canvas that you want to go for. Um, Photoshop, like, by default, has a couple of options, usually international paper and A4. If that's just all I work with. It's usually fine. It's nice. It's big enough to do what I need it to do. I always work in, um, landscape if I can. As you can see, this should be the same size. I shouldn't have messed with this too much. All good. I usually want to get rid of that stupid locked background. Who the hell do you think you are, Photoshop, locking the background? Christ. And then I always try and go for a grey background, a nice simple grey background so I can actually see what it is I'm doing. Uh, typically I'll probably want to set up, um, I'm going to have a folder dedicated to all my backgrounds and all my references. Um, yes, I use references. I'm allowed to. It's my channel, I do my own rules. And then I'll, and then I'll have a um, layer dedicated to like the actual art piece that I'm going to work on. So that background can get in there. I don't even, I don't know why I'm setting this up. This is like, I'm not even going to use those, but that's typically how I do it. And then, I don't know, in Polyon, I'll do a stupid little sketch real quick. Whoop. Ta-da! That's my stupid little sketch. But the fun part is, at least when it, you know, when I put all my background and all my references in that layer, then all I have to do is just turn off that at the end of it. This is this is basic stuff, but you know what? Sometimes, you know, just knowing the basic stuff helps. Don't worry about it. Alright, I don't need you anymore. You've helped tell us how we set up the canvas. Alright, so uh, then what I'll probably do, as you can see here, that's my background. I've brought in all my references off of the internet. I'll probably use these just for like ripping off colors later on. Don't worry about it. And what I've also done this time around is I've brought in... Um, this is a sketch. I'll, I'll bring that up to 100% opacity so you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. This is a sketch that I actually did in one of my um, art books like ages and ages ago. I don't even remember how long it was. Because uh, usually I'll at least like draft out an idea of something that I want to do uh, in my art book. Listen, if you're that if you're that kid, if you're that kid that's always like drawing in the back of your class and all your school books, just stupid little doodles, congratulations. You've already hit step one. You can already do the art. I, sh I want to probably point out at this point, I'm, I have not planned this video out at all, that I am like absolutely 100% like a self-taught artist. Like basically my, I had no formal teaching or anything. My instruction was I went to, I don't know, Tumblr and I looked up bloody, um, I put art tutorials in the search engine and I just ripped off their stuff to like learn how to do a couple of the basic things here. Otherwise, what I'm what I'm trying to get at is I am an absolute 100% amateur at this. That's just been an amateur long enough that my stuff looks all right. So if anything, I hope that you know you watching this video is going to be enough for you to go. Oh yeah, I can do that. I mean, if he can do it, I can do it, right? That's 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 the whole thing. That's what I want you to get out of this video. I just use like a crappy like hundred dollar Wacom bamboo. I don't even think they make this Wacom anymore, actually, which is a shame. But bamboo does like some really decent uh, cheap. Uh, Wacom tablets. It takes a while to get used to a Wacom tablet, but you know what? When you start with the stuff I was doing in gold version, hang on a second. This is the kind of hot garbage. The kind of hot garbage that I was putting out way back in, uh, what was it, 2015 when I started the Daglock series? That's way back in gold version. I'd already been doing it for a couple of months at that point. But, uh, basically, you know what, if you're willing to buy a cheap Wacom and you're willing to put out some absolute garbage for a couple of months, it doesn't take long before the absolute garbage starts, you know, getting a little bit better, getting a little bit better, and then we start making stuff like, like this. This was like four years, three, four, three years, three years improvement, or, you know, all it, all it had to take, it's still not perfect. But, you know, all it took was just willing to make a bunch of hot garbage for a couple of years. And then the garbage I put out now looks a little bit better. A little bit better. I'm going to show you what my method is uh, going to be today. Is I'm going to show you how it is that I do this sort of style. Alright, so I've taught you how to set up the canvas. I'm going to bring back the opacity down for that. That's the point I was supposed to make earlier and then I went on for my stupid tangent. You don't need this. I'm using it because I really like it and I want to use, and I want to use this particular pose, but... 
Normally when I do this, I don't even bother scanning this crap in. I'll have drafted it out in my little art book at home, but I won't scan it. This is this is an exception because like this looks good and I want to and I want to work with this one, okay? Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. I've already set up uh, on this particular uh, file my sketch layer of I'm just gonna have a sketch layer. Don't worry about looking too good. This is you thought that you know, you thought that last shit was hot garbage? This. This is your layout for drawing all of your hot garbage. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start just with a basic outline. Doesn't have to look particularly interesting, just like, I don't know, circle for a head. I'll draw my sort of eye line. That's, that's how I know that I probably like later on am gonna want like eyes around about there. Um, typically, like most artists will teach you how to do the circle. If you are drawing a human being, which I'm not today, typically that's not quite enough. Cause like, look, you put your eyes there then you actually want to draw like the rest of the jawbone on top of that because human heads aren't round. They're not round like that. But then you draw the rest of your human head and then like a little bit back. Cause human heads are weird. Humans are stupid and weird creatures and their heads grow back a bit like that. Thankfully, uh, I guess I, I don't really need that on Crazy Diamond here. Not that this matters. Again, this is my, this is my stupid garbage uh, sketch layer that I'm working off of. We're just going to draw the rest of the body. I'm going to do, um, I'm, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn that off or else you're not really going to see what it is I'm talking about today. I'm going to go with my line of action. That's basically the idea of a line of action is I'll, I'll draw it in a nice bright magenta to blind you. Can't even see that. Let's, let's go fucking nuts. There we go. That's my line of action. The sort of idea of, you know what? Don't worry about the line of action. I'll tell you what that is later on. Okay. Don't worry about that. Let me draw the rest of the sketch first. So I'm going to draw in uh, basically my spine, you do your torso. Again, you don't have to do anything particularly fancy here. You're not, you're not working fancy. This is purely planning. This is you coming up with, you know, how the rest of the piece is going to look. Typically, I like to try and sort of like get some sort of bend going on between where my shoulder blades are going to be. And then I'll probably draw in the um, shoulder blades and the rest of sort of where the torso muscle is going to be. Just so I know sort of like, you know, where my chest is going to go and how it's going to look out. Empoleon here is a little bit fat, that's because he's supposed to be a penguin, but like, I have a bad habit of mostly drawing my stuff to be sort of human-y, so it's going to look mostly like, like, you know, it's got a big torso and uh, everything else. Like, it, that's up to you. Like, you know, don't, you know, don't do what I'm doing. I'm not here to show you how to do the way I do it. I'm, well, I guess I am trying to teach you how to do it, but you know, you do, you do your own way. I'm just teaching you some of the stuff that I do that will hopefully, you know, uh, help you out when you're at home doing your own stuff. Um, one little trick, I'm probably going to draw in my limbs now, and then I'd have drawn this. I might draw, might draw my dick box. Might draw me a nice little, uh, hip box right here. Typically, uh, there's sort of that weird, um, bendy bit, I guess, on the torso. Um, so I will draw that in, like, here, as you can see. Connect that to, uh, my hips. And that way I'll know that I can draw sort of, like, the hips over the top of that, so you kind of get that, like, hippie look. That's, um... That's a little, that, that's a little short. I think that's a little bit short for what I like. So I'm just going to use my stretch tool, uh, just to stretch that out a little bit. Not that it matters. You don't even have to do, like, I probably should have just, like, drawn it separate. Oh, well, don't worry about it. Uh, but I still got that nice little line of action going. I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, one quick little trick to sort of make sure that your, um, your limbs are also going to look good. Like, look, I could go sticks. Look at that. I could go sticks. And that looks all right. It'll do if you know what it is you're doing. But a nice little way to sort of give your limbs a little bit more of a flow when you're in this sort of um, design practice phase here is you draw it with a slight curve like that. And then I want to do it like that because I know I sort of want the idea of the leg like, you know, uh, curving around like that. And I'll do the same for this leg. Maybe on this hand because I sort of want the idea of, I, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but I want to do that sort of thing. Um, and then I'll probably just draw my little foot box in there. So that's like a simple little trick that like already, already before you've even started like the actual outline, the actual um, art piece of this, that's when you're already planning out how to get sort of the flow happening on the rest of your character. And then I'll, I don't know, draw in, draw in something super quick on the legs there. That's sort of like what I'm hoping my limbs are going to look like eventually. Um, I'll, I like to draw in the shoulder blades separate because your shoulder blades kind of come off your torso rather than just like extending right off it. And then you can draw the rest of your limbs in there. So I sort of want my arm to do this. Probably bring it up a little bit more. 
Uh, I can get away. I can cheat a little bit. I can cheat a little bit if, if I bring up this sketch because I sort of. I'll, this is this is me. This is me teaching you how I'm cheating right here because I've drawn his arm sort of like coming out like that, coming at the camera. I can probably get away with like hiding a bunch of the um the limbs at this stage. So you go away now and like we can probably just draw where I'm sort of thinking like his big flipper arm here is gonna come out. So there we go. That's sort of that's the absolute basic sort of um. That's the absolute basic uh, outline. This is none of this. None of this is going to stick. This is again sort of just me uh, planning out what I'm thinking of doing. Uh, one really weird thing about this design on Empoleon actually is uh, Empoleon sort of these little um, pointy bits on his on his uh, flippers because they're supposed to be flippers. They're supposed to be penguin wings. Uh, these pointy bits actually come out on his elbow. Like his arms would probably bend, I guess, sort of like eh, eh, if he wanted to instead of like uh, whatever. Um, but because I'm sort of going with a more, uh, humanoid design on my version of, uh, Crazy Diamond, the Empoleon here, um, they're actually going to come sort of like midway up the arm. So yes, if you're asking, I know the anatomy is going to look a little bit goofy on him, but whatever. It looks cool. Shut up. So there, let's compare that to sort of what I, uh, had planned there. Yeah, that's fine. What I might do, a very quick trick, is I'm going to go Control T, and that brings up my transform options, and that's where I can like, you know... Rotate it if I want, or I can stretch the. Whoop, if I can stretch stuff out if I want. What I actually want to do right now, very quickly, is I want to mess with the perspective. I want to sort of bring that down so it looks like he's sort of lunging forward at the camera, if it, if it makes sense. And again, this is the sketch phase. I don't have to worry too much about like damaging this or anything. I might like make the legs down here even more perspective y. Because his legs look a little bit fat for me. Like, I'm I'm the kind of guy who really likes drawing these sort of stick-thin sort of figures. Have you have you ever seen anything by bloody James Silver, the dude who does, like, um, the dishwasher games, for example? Uh, yeah, that was me. That's definitely the kind of stuff that I would, like, really enjoy drawing. So you see that a lot in sort of the stuff I do. I always draw these, like, stick-thin uh, little characters... Um, I think I, I think I've brought this one in a little bit close, but you know what? That's okay because again, this is my design phase. I really don't care. I honestly don't care all that much. Like you know, if I make this layer look crap, because this is only me sort of planning stuff out. All right. So what can I talk about now? I reckon that's I reckon that's decent. That's decent for now. Very quickly, what I might show off as well. I'm going to bring down the opacity of that so I can show you some of the design basic stuff that I've got. I was talking about line of action earlier. Uh, mo you know, if you've ever done like any sort of art teaching or anything, like you know, if you're doing cartoon stuff like me, um, then you're definitely going to see this a lot. Sort of the idea that um, you've got this sort of curvature to your anatomy um, that sort of like implies the direction of where you want the um, where you want the action of the piece to go. Um, most of the time, I think they like to teach you um, sort of do it to. It, the line of action should always involve the spine. I'm generally of the opinion that's not necessarily 100% true. Honestly, it's just like up to how you want to do it. But that's sort of like a good idea of, you know, of my line of action because I'm doing everything in sort of curves. You know, I sort of want the idea of that um, he's sort of bending up that way, if that makes sense. And you can like, you can always do the exact same thing to the rest of your piece as well. Man, this is a really shoddy looking... Um, <laughs> Sketch layer, but again, that's fine. That's fine because all I'm doing is um, practicing. All I'm doing is setting up and practicing here. And then later on, when I need to sort of draft stuff out even better, I'll probably like end up drawing over the top of this layer because I might go, oh, I need to know better where Crazy D's chest is. So I'll start drawing crap like all over this, usually in a bright color so I can see it pretty well. See? Speaking of, uh, now that I've got the basic outline done, yeah, this I'm probably going to do something like this. I'm probably going to plan out. Uh, where the rest of his stuff goes. Like, I know he's going to have, like, a helmet here. I don't want his head to come out that way. I want his beak to come out that way. In all, in all honesty, this time around, I'm probably going to cheat, and I'm just going to, like, work off the sketch that I did earlier. But this is sort of me showing you that you don't need to do that. You can plan out sort of how it is you want to do in Photoshop. You can just start your planning right here. So long as you just sort of have a basic idea of what, what it is you want to look for, what, what it is you plan. You don't even have to have, have a basic idea. You can just like come up with something on the fly. Don't worry about it. Sometimes when I'm in this planning phase, I might like to um, bring up the... I should tell you about this brush because I know. I know you're all thinking, oh man, what kind of brush does he fucking use? I use these sort of three um, charcoal brushes. I was using these a lot when I was doing um, Emerald version, like everything. 
was in these brushes. Um, I think these, like, some person just puts them out on DeviantArt, like, for absolutely free. I will leave a link in the description for you. But these are fantastic brushes if you're an absolute beginner like me, because what you can do with these brushes is I can sort of, you know, crisscross over that. And then when I want to erase the line, because I went, oops, I made a bloody mistake. It's super nice that you can, um, like, you get, you get it pretty clean. Like, you can't really see, because um, the brush is so soft. So soft and charcoal -y. Um That you can't really see where I've erased it. Versus what I do sort of now, I'll use this brush. And then, um, like, when you're an absolute beginner, this is, like, just the default photo br Photoshop brush that I've uh, messed with. It's usually, it looks a little bit messy, but... Once you've sort of been doing this long enough, you can sort of make it look a little bit better. This is just the, um, yeah, you see how, it, yeah, you can see how it looks shoddy already. This brush is just the default um, Photoshop brush, um, like way up here. But what I did in its presets, I think this is how I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't usually use brush sets. You, like, I, I try to, because when I was using this brush, you can see I get this weird um, sort of choppiness. To each of my lines whenever I do something, if that makes sense. So it was really hard to sort of get nice flowing stuff. So what I did was reduce the spacing way down to fucking zero percent, and then I sort of would get a. I'm not wait, hang on, I might not have done that right. Fucking what? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck it is I'm doing anymore. Um, whoops. Can you tell? Can you tell I'm an absolute bloody amateur? No, no. I need that hardness at a nice, nice, easy one hundred percent. Wow, that looks like trash. Wow, I'm just fucking with brushes now. I'm just fucking with brushes. How the fuck did I make this brush? Because I had to, I had to make a nice new brush because I didn't like the way that um, yeah, no, fuck that shit. All right, don't worry about it. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. But uh, you know, if you're me, you might want to consider taking that brush, making your own brush. It's not too hard to do. You can just sort of mess with the brush settings. Um, and I reduced the hardness on that. You should actually be able to tell. Yeah, see, I reduced the spacing on that to 100%, just so I got the nice sort of smooth look that I wanted. Anyway, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that hot garbage. We're here to we're here to plan crap out. Wow, that was, oh, uh, that was a mess. That was a mess. No, every my all my Photoshop has fucking um, rearranged itself. No, don't do that. No, no, I like I, I like the way it, I I like how I do things. All right, so there we go. We've sort of planned out the basics of how I, of how I want this piece. I am honestly just gonna like roll off this one, but you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do another sketch layer like over the top of this one, just so I get something that I like a little bit better. Give me a minute. And there we go. Hey, guess what? That one looks even worse. And you know what? That's okay. It's allowed to look worse. Because, you know, this isn't the serious part. This is just us planning. This is pure planning. That's all this is. That's all that I'm doing here is just coming up with the absolute roughest sketch of what I want. And I'm sort of fiddling with it to sort of go, oh, yeah, maybe I want to, I don't know, like turn this leg around a little bit. You know, just sort of get a little bit of a better pose. Maybe I want to use my skew tool a little bit just to sort of, um, I don't know, make him... Come back this way a little bit. Maybe I don't like that. Again, doesn't matter. This honestly doesn't matter. Hell, I might even get I might even get a little bit crazy and just like go warp to do some really extreme bullshit to this sketch. It's okay, because again, all this is is just coming up with the absolute bare basics of a plan for what it is that you want to do. One thing I might even do, honestly, is uh, make another little layer underneath that. I might just, I don't know, rip off that color or something. And I might just like make a nice big brush here and sort of plan out the, uh, nah, it's too dark. Now nah, let's do, let's go a nice deep blue so I can see what I'm doing. I might even just like come up with the absolute bare basics of a draft for colors. So I know sort of what it is that's, uh, you know, where everything's going to be. What I, what sort of colors I might want the finished piece to be. It might help my stuff stand out a little bit if I need it, you know? Maybe I'll do that. I don't know, chuck on some light blue because I'm thinking like, He's definitely going to have some light blue. Oh, we're going to talk color theory. Don't you worry. Color theory is a sort of big part of what I do here with the um, Daglock series. So you will, you people will learn by the end of this. But there we go. I don't know. I'm planning out some basic shit. That'll do. That's all I need. I don't know. Chuck on some yellow. I don't need this. I didn't used to work with this. It's just some, sometimes it's nice to be able to sort of see what it is you're doing. There we go. That'll do. That's all I want. Just something nice and simple so I can sort of see where everything is. 
This is where all my stuff starts. So now, I don't know, I'll reduce that nice and low. Even get rid of you, fuck you. Reduce you, because I don't necessarily... Yeah, you know, I'll leave the sketch visible, but I don't necessarily want it at 100% or else I'm not going to fucking see what it is I'm doing. Alright, so now I think it's time. I might rename those layers so I know what it fucking is I'm actually uh, working off. There, that's my very basic bare bones sketch. And then this is my uh, cull sketch, I guess. Shit, shit, I don't even care about spelling shit right when I'm uh, working on this. Alright, so now let's go with our basic outline. Alright, now again, since I know you're going to ask about brushes, all I typically do is I work with the very absolute basic default hard uh, Photoshop brush and then I've just reduced the spacing um, down to like 1% to the absolute bare minimum on it in the brush presets tab here just so I get like the um, the smoothness that it is I'm looking for. You can screw around with brushes and you can figure out you know what the hell it is you want. I'm not here to tell you you know what brushes you should use. All that matters really is you know just drawing something, just fucking drawing something, just start some bullshit, that's all you gotta do. Alright, so now let's go with our absolute basic outline, I might even, I'm probably gonna have like a billion fucking layers for this, but I like to sort of have my head def definitely as a separate layer, so I can screw with that um, when I need to. So definitely sort of, um, the nice thing about Empoleon is he's got this big sort of trident sort of beak thing here, that I can use that, I can absolutely use that to sort of um, plan it out. Now. Here's something that I'm definitely going to teach you, like that was a big difference between sort of when I started this and when I finished. Let me bring up all my previous artworks again. Um, oh god, this is old. Holy shit, look how fucking old this is. Look how I, look where I started from, guys. This, this is goddamn ancient and embarrassing. Can I zoom in? What you're gonna, definitely going to notice when I started here is I'm very choppy. I've got very, very super bloody choppy, um outlines and that's because when I started all this probably what I was doing was going eh and then oh no I, I don't like where that's going so uh, I'm just gonna yeah see you don't try to avoid that try to especially avoid this I know it's I know it sounds confronting but you're probably as best as you can I'm gonna get rid of all that shit what you probably want to do is as best as you can sort of do it in uh, in one stroke that way you don't get that nasty choppiness don't worry don't freak out too much because you always have your control Z. You always got your control Z to help you out. So, I don't know. Yep, one. Blam, one. And then I can use my um, selection tool or my transform tools if I want to, like, mess around with stuff and put it, oh, I don't like where that line went. Or, you know, you can always just control Z it. You can always just control Z it and it will be fine. So, uh, see, I don't like that line, for example. So, I'm just going to control Z that. That's all I got to do. No. Just gonna keep doing that. Sometimes, like, you know, it'll take me like 20 or 30 goes to get the exact sort of line that it is I like, and that's okay. You're even allowed to sort of overlap like this. Don't worry too much. This is still super early. This is still, like, you know, the piece hasn't really properly started yet. So don't panic too much about getting this 100% perfect your first time, because I promise you, no matter how, you know, how, no matter how big of a hot shot you think you are during your little sketchbooks in the back of class, you know, it's never going to be, you're never going to get perfect, like, second zero. You're never going to get it 100% right. That is an absolute promise. I kind of broke my own rules there a little bit, saying I want to do it, like, in one in one bloody line. And then, you know, drawing over the top of it. And you know what? That's okay. You know, again, I'm not, I'm not a narc. I'm not here to tell you, no, you have to do it like this. No, fucking do it your own way. You don't have to do any of the shit that I do in this video if you don't want it. It's your art piece. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Don't worry about it. So, I don't know. I'll plan that out. There we go. See, this is, this is nice. This is sort of where I can use my, um, you know, where I've been planning all this out to go, oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, no, I think that bit's a little long or something. You know, that sort of thing. So maybe, yeah, I reckon that. Yeah. Obviously, obviously I don't like that line in particular, but, uh, whoop. Get a nice sort of curvy line going if I can. Sort of curve it outwards. Again, that sort of um, flow to the piece that I was looking for. Again, look at this. It's taking me a couple of goes. And you know what? That's all right. That is absolutely 100% all right. There we go. We'll just link that up. Trust me, do it early. Do it early and link all this shit up now if you want. I don't even 100% like necessarily the uh, angle on that because, like, you know, it looks super, like, short on this end and long on that end. And you know what? That's fine. All i got to do is get my selection tool. Circle selection tool is always going to be so much fucking easier. Don't worry too much about it. There we go. I'll just go ahead and select that line as much as I can. Command T it. Bring up the pivot point there, and I can rotate it as much as I want. There, that looks a little bit better, don't you think? 
Yeah, maybe that. Stretch it out a little bit. Don't worry about it. Again, this is early. Don't freak out too much. Hell, I even think I could sort of bring it out a little bit more that way. Yeah, and then sort of bring the, um, bring the sort of apex of that up a little bit higher. There we go. How's that? I don't know. I'll fix up that line, for example. Eh, eh. And that's all it is. It's super simple. You know, it'll take, it'll, it might take, you know, a couple of goes to, um, sort of get what it is you're looking for. You can even see, like, God, my hands are wobbly. My hands are wobbly from, you know, drinking bloody, um, Red Bull and coffee all bloody day of my life. Don't freak out too much. Don't freak out too much because we're going to fix a lot of this shit later on. Don't you panic. There we go. I think I want to thicken up that line a little bit. That's starting to look a little bit, a little bit better. It looks fine. It looks fine for now. Uh, do I want to bring this part up of the video now or do I want to leave it till later? Wow, my computer is losing its shit. You can probably hear that in the background. No, I don't know. I'll put on some Bob Ross music over the top of this. So nobody has to hear how garbage my computer is. Um, definitely one thing that you're going to want to learn real quick to do, because I didn't do this. I did not do this back when I was doing, um, gold version, actually. Flip the goddamn canvas. Flip the goddamn canvas. Image rotation, flip canvas, horizontal. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do, because no matter what, your lines are always going to slant a little bit if you're left or right-handed. I'm a lefty, so I got it, like, the absolute worst of all. So you're absolutely, because you're not going to see stuff. You're not going to see stuff unless you, like, you know, remember to flip your canvas. So, goddamn flip your canvas, okay? Like, even that's starting to look a little bit long now, actually, when I look at this. Like, I couldn't see that when it was flipped the other way, because I've been, I don't know, let's say I've been working on this piece for, like, eight hours or some garbage, and I can't, you know, I can't see that. So, what I might do is just, again, mess with that, bring that in a little bit more. Eh, is that looking a little bit better? Yeah, sure. This, uh, this line here isn't necessarily curvy enough. I don't think the line is quite curved as much as I would like it. So maybe I might work with my warp tool. My warp tool in transform. Warp. Maybe I'll bring that out a little bit. Maybe that looks a little bit nice. Hell, sometimes I might just like, I don't know, transform and flip that around. But I think that looks decent. I think that looks decent for now. But again, you know what? It's still early. It's still early. Like, you might not want to bother, like, you know, constantly flipping your stupid canvas until you're absolutely done with the full outline. Maybe that's your thing that you want to do. I might try and do a full outline now um, to sort of explain this better. So um, give, me, give me a couple of minutes. I think just on his head for now, that'll do. That looks... Yeah, it looks a little goofy right now. I know it's going to look goofy, I know, because I still got a bunch of stuff to fix. Uh, hopefully one of the things you might have taken away from when I was doing, uh, when I was doing that sort of time lapse there, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. That's how it works. I'm not, you know, I'm never going to get this right the first time. I am not a speed painter. There are guys who have been, like, studying this for literal, like, a decade or two. And they can, like, bang out a piece in, like, you know, sometimes a couple of minutes. You see guys do amazing landscapes in, like, 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm not that guy. Nah, nah, I'm probably going to spend, like, a couple of days, honestly, working on Crazy Diamond here, trying to get him, like, the way I like him. Um, but I don't know. From here, at least, he looks, like, fine. I think that eye here... I haven't... I've tried really hard not to flip the canvas, because I know I'm not... You know, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna see things. There's stuff that I'm looking at here, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that looks like... It looks like it'll be fine. But I'm almost certain that, like, you know, something's going to go wrong. So, I don't know, I might... I didn't even show you how I do circles, but I'll show that to you, like, eventually. So, I'm looking at the eye there, and I'm going, yeah, sure, that eye looks a little goofy. So, I might just, like, rearrange that a little bit with my transform tools. Just get rid of that. I've got a nice small eraser for now. I will... I will mess with the eraser size, like, if I need. Like, normally, I work with something like a 10, normally, because I always work on, like, like size 8 outlines, I guess. Like, I'll go 5 if I need to go something really small, like this eyeball here. Um, yeah, I'm saying that's gonna look fine. Uh, it doesn't look, it doesn't look good, but it doesn't have to look good for now. It doesn't have to look good for now, because it's early. It's early, I've barely started the piece, it's not gonna look phenomenal. I even at one point decided that I was gonna make sort of the trident on his face here, and his actual face, like a separate layer, so I could like mess with it later without like necessarily screwing with shit. So if I flip the canvas horizontal now, what kind of stuff do I see? What kind of mistakes am I starting to look at and go, oh, I don't know about that. 
Yeah, I'm already seeing, for example, um, this trident here. I don't like that trident bit there. It looks a little bit small compared to the other one, which I couldn't see. I couldn't see when I was... Um, I couldn't see when I um, had it the other way around. So I'll bring that out a little bit. I think that'll probably look... Yeah, maybe. It's not It's not going to look good. It's going to take me like a few dozen, like, you know, canvas slips, ugh, canvas flips before I'm absolutely 100% certain just on the head. And I haven't even started the rest of the body, for example. So, yeah, I'm going to cheap scatter and just, yeah, just use your razor brush and do that. I could, I could easily, like, you know, go up here, like, draw crap like that and say, oh, I don't want to get, I don't want to have this thing, blah, 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 don't worry about that. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing this because I'm smart. No, fuck that shit. I'm doing it because I like it. Okay, so that for example, and you can probably see a bunch more mistakes than I can. You can probably see all the mistakes that I've made. I don't think that, I think that I, for example, should be a little bit lower to come in the line with there. I might have to sort of screw with that a little bit to get it working. And yeah, looks fine, I guess. I don't, I'm not concerned too much about, like I am concerned about now that I'm thinking about it. But, like, here, for example, yeah, I don't really care if, like, some of these, like, under ones go under. Because I can, I can, I can still, um, I can still plan crap out. I can still plan crap out nice and early. I think I might even, like, chuck a line over this trident here. So, just so it sort of looks like it's being divided properly. Um, and then you got his beak to worry about. And his beak looks a little bit goofy as well. That's alright. That's alright. Like, you know, art is a process. It's gonna take... It's going to take, like, me probably, like, another day or two even, like, trying to work on this before I'm absolutely 100% happy with um, something I've got. So, that looks like garbage, but that's okay. I knew it was going to look like garbage. Um, yeah, it looks all right to me. There's going to be mistakes for now that I can't actually see. So, I'm not concerned too much. Uh, do I have any circles to worry about on him? Probably not going to have all that many circles on Crazy Diamond here to deal with. So very quickly, I'll show you a little. Um, I'll show you a little cheat that I've got. I keep on hand with me. Um, this. This is just like a um, like a basic circle texture that I grabbed from um, Wikipedia. I just. It's just. It's just like their basic circle. It's a perfect or close enough like equilateral circle that I usually use to cheat. So what am I? I might bring that nice and low. Don't worry about you. This is just me showing you. Sort of my cheat for drawing a circle, which I could have done for his eyes, but Crazy Diamond's not going to have enough eyes. So I don't know, I'll reduce the size on that just for the sake of it. And then what I'll normally do is make a new layer for the circle. And then what I might do is, eh, God no, that's too small. I don't like that. Try again. No, nope. keep going. I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep doing that until I get a circle that I like. That's all right. That's not a bad circle. It's definitely not perfect, but that's all right. Well, I might just shore up that a little. Oop. It's definitely not that. I might just uh, shore that line up a little bit. It's allowed to be rough. It's allowed to be rough because, hey, listen. You know, if you're some amazing dude who went to some you're like you know amazing rich people's art school. And, you know, they, I don't know, whipped you with, like, rulers or something over your fingernails every time you didn't get it right or something. Then maybe, maybe you can draw a perfect circle whenever you want. I sure as shit can't, and I don't know a lot of people that can. Circles are actually really fucking hard to draw. So, talk, normally what I'll do is, that looks pretty shoddy, actually. That looks, like, pretty shoddy, but, you know, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that too much. i got a couple of cheats that I can use to sort of sort that out. So now, that'll do. That'll do. Now what I'm probably going to do with this is I'm actually going to use my warp tool here and boop. I'm just going to, you know, sneakily try and line up what I've drawn with the uh, with the outline of the, of the um, circle that I already got from Wikipedia. There we go. That looks all right. It's, it's uh, mostly covering up. Yeah, that'll do. It's close enough. I'm not too concerned. And then what I can do is I can rotate the circle. And if it's a perfect circle, then you won't see too much variation. But even I can start to see there, for example, like uh, this bit. Actually, one thing that might help people out. I often like to sort of like color the white part of that circle in a nice bright color. There we go. You can see that a little bit easier now. Um, I can already see, yeah, you can see how like this part of the circle is starting to um, come out. It's bulge out a little bit too much. So what I can do again is warp, bring that, bring that in. There we go. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine enough. Yeah, I can see that's sort of coming in a little bit. There we go. 
Still not perfect. It's going to take a couple of goes. It will always take a couple of goes until you get a circle that you like. Don't worry about, like, you know, how I like the circle. You do the circle the way you bloody want. I'm not a, I'm not a fucking narc. Um, sure, that'll do. I might even, I might even cheat again a little bit. I might get rid of that half of the circle. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer. Boop. Going to, because that's, that's a whole new layer now. I'm going to go transform, flip horizontal, and then I can uh, just go left. Oh, God, that's going to be real slow, but don't worry about it. Just hit left on my keyboard to bring it all the way over here. And we go. Make it a little bit... Hey, Crazy Diamond said, you look a little goofy there. You look a little goofy, but that is okay. Yeah, there we go. How's that looking? Close enough. Lines up. I'm not too concerned. I am not too concerned. I'll probably merge those layers now. And there we go. A nice... Simple circle, you know, if you if you think it's not circly enough for you, you know, you can you can repeat these steps You can repeat these steps until you get a nice decent looking circle that you like do you like the circle? I like the circle I think that's a decent enough circle and you can cheat even more and you can just like copy that circle and like As many times as you want you can like chuck it all over the piece whenever you need it say oh man I can do better on his eyes. It is always gonna reduce like that, but don't worry about that That's just your little cheat that you can do to do a pretty decent, almost perfect circle. Don't worry too much about that. I don't actually need circles. I only purely did that to sort of show off like, you know, some of my cheats that might help you out. All right, I'm gonna time lapse the shit out of this one now until Crazy Diamond is, is outlined is about right. If I think of anything else, then I'll bring it up during the video, but otherwise like, you know, see you in about like, I don't know, two minutes or something. Okay, so now it's been a good couple of hours that I've been working on this. Like, I, I, he's, he's definitely not finished yet, and he definitely doesn't look as good as the, uh, as the sketch I drew on my book. But that's okay, that's, that's pretty normal, honestly. Like, for me at least, that's pretty normal that, like, the stuff never looks quite as good as the stuff that I can, like, just draw, you know, for five minutes in a book. But anyway, don't worry about that. He basically, for the most part, has most of his anatomy on. I haven't, um, gotten around to drawing, like... Uh, for example, all of his um, armor pieces, he still needs some of his like shoulder armor, he still needs his chest armor. He's still There's still a lot, bunch of elements that uh, is missing from Crazy Diamond right now, but the important thing right now is that he's got a full anatomy. He's got a head, he's got... I can turn off the sketch layers right now. Look at how many fucking layers it took me. Look at how many fucking layers it took me to get to this point. Like, there are people who can do, like, a whole piece in, like, one. They can do an out. They can do everything they want in a single uh, outline. They, they can do it in a single layer, I should say. And I mean that's fine, but like I'm not that good. I'm not that good. If, if it takes, you know, I'm, again, I'm not a knock. If it takes you like, you know, 85 billion goddamn uh, layers in order to make what you want, then fine. Take 80 goddamn billion layers to make what you want. The important thing is that it, like basically his whole basic anatomy is down. What I've tried really hard not to do. Uh, is flip the canvas. One thing I didn't want to do was flip the canvas because I knew that I was going to see um, as soon as I was, as soon as I flipped the canvas, you know, I was going to see a bunch of mistakes and stuff that I want to fix. And even now I'm looking at this going, no, I know there's a bunch of mistakes. Also, you know what else I did? I bug it off. I bug it off for a couple of hours because like that, that's important. Like, you know, maybe you can knock out an art piece in an entire afternoon if you're good. And that's good and all. But you, it's going to help a lot to just sort of disappear for a couple of hours, you know, go do something else, go work on another piece if you want, whatever it is, because if you're, when you're, you know, when you're that close to the project and you've been working on it for that many hours, you, there's gonna be, there's gonna be stuff you're gonna miss, you're not gonna be able to see sort of all the mistakes, but what I want to do now is, I'd say I'm reasonably happy with this, I'd say for the moment, I'm reasonably happy, I think the, uh, I think the entire piece for the most part looks pretty decent, like, obviously, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that I've got to fix because I've been fiddling with it. Uh, also, one of the nice things about having, um, 
one of the nice things about having all these sort of separate layers is I can um, I can screw with stuff later on if I want. I can say, oh, maybe I want to make his head a little bigger or something like that. I don't want to make his head a little bigger. But it's nice being able to sort of like rearrange all the um, all the pieces as I want if I feel that, you know, I want to bring this up. I want to, you know, fiddle with it. Maybe I want to bring in my my uh, warp tool here and sort of bring that up. Oh, it actually looks, I, I, I was just doing that as an example, but yeah, sure, I'm gonna do that, make that sort of a little bit more rounded. There's a lot more fiddling to go, but I've tried not to flip the canvas. I've tried not to flip it because I'm looking at this right now going, yep, I'd say the anatomy looks pretty decent. So what happens now if I flip my canvas horizontal? What kind of mistakes am I starting to see now? Yeah, I'm starting to see quite a few, actually. I am starting to see quite a few. For example, uh, I'm not a fan of like where his torso's going here. It looks like there's way too much. Like, I couldn't see that. I couldn't see that from the other way around. What the fuck is that thing even doing there? What are you? What are you? Go away. Whoever you are, go. What? It's a, it's a piece from the armor layer. Okay. But yeah, I feel like, for example, I could bring this line down a little bit to sort of make it look more like, uh, you know, one side of his chest isn't like, longer than the other and he's gonna end up lopsided oh god i drew it on the armor layer i'll get used to that get used to like drawing shit on the wrong layer because it's always going to happen so many of my pieces i've like almost ruined because i've bloody um drawn the drawn them on the wrong layer but don't worry about it that's part of the problem of having a million goddamn layers what else can i see uh i mean obviously this leg here looks pretty screwy i'm not a fan of that so i'm gonna bring in my that tool gonna yeah it's gonna give me an extra second this is gonna take a hot minute no, no, come back. You're going too far. You're going way too far. This is like long and tedious. There's going to be a lot of long and tedious sort of drawing the art. Because this is, you know, when I'm in my outlining phase, this is the part that always takes the fucking longest. This is the part that always is going to like, you know, take forever and ever and ever. But once, once this is, once this part of your art piece is done, then it becomes like, so much quicker, so much faster to get everything else done. Might want to turn that around a little bit. How's that looking? One like trick I like to do, just even for the sake of like proportioning stuff, is I just kind of like it's gross, but I'll stick my fingers on the screen. Like I'm looking at his thigh there, and right now at my magnification, I can fit three of my fingers on that. So is the other thigh? I can fit four of my fingers on the other thigh. So I don't know. Maybe I want to like readjust these to make them look better or something. I don't know. This is still sort of. We're, we've we've done the basic anatomy now. All all it is is going to be fiddling. We're gonna I'm gonna be fiddling with this for the next couple of hours, trying to make this like you know look what I want it to look like. So, um, what else? What else? While I've what what else? While I've got the layer flipped, is there anything else that I feel like I want to change? Is that arm here starting to look a little bit long? I cheated. I cheated super hard with the fingers layer. I just copied this one finger here that I think is on my armor layer right now. I just copied that, pasted, flipped it around, started fiddling with it. it you know what? It's your art piece, and I'm going to tell you what. Just cheat. If you got to cheat, cheat as hard as you can so long as you get your art piece done, I think. Just, you know, always be cheating forever and ever and never stop. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of cheating if the end product looks pretty all right. All right, he's, he looks a little messy, but he's getting there. He's getting there. De yeah, did I just say I wanted to um, move that arm around? Maybe sort of bring that in a little bit. Maybe I want to um, bring those fingers here just so I can... Oops. Just so I can, yep, bring the whole unit in. No, the armor layer, right. How could I forget that, that one finger... Ah, oh, that's all right. I can, I can fix that pretty much whenever I want. Maybe I want to use my perspective tool, which I can use to sort of make something look like it's, you know, like, there, look, the arm looks like it's kind of, like, you know, coming towards the camera. That's not bad. P perspective tool is a goddamn lifesaver for me, honestly. Uh, all these, all these, um, where is it? Edit, transform. All of these tools, to some degree, are, like, amazing. Just to sort of, like, screw with little bits and layers. The nice thing... The nice thing about learning to do sort of art digitally like this is if you feel like you're going to change something, like, you know, you can pretty well do it in like any other medium. Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta, um, yeah, they're mostly locked in. They're mostly locked in. But at least when it's digital art, you can, you know, you can fiddle with stuff and you can make it the way that you want to go. All right. So I think for now, at least, um, I don't have that much else to show you just during the outlining phase. All this that I'm doing right now is pretty much just, um, is pretty much just the fiddling phase. This is just the phase where I'm going to spend like a couple of hours, maybe a day or two, sort of um, 
reworking the piece, trying to make it, uh, you know, trying to get something that looks final. I'm going to add the armor pieces on. I'm going to flip the canvas a lot more. I'm going to keep flipping the canvas over and over again because I'm not going to see. Because, you know, it doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed. You're always secretly going to, like, slant towards a certain direction and you're not going to see things. So always, like, even now I'm looking at that going, you know, all that work I just put into moving his arm there, now it looks too short. Now his arm looks a little too short, but I couldn't see that, like, just when I had it flipped. So, uh, does that feel a little better? I'm going to be fiddling with this bit a lot. Get used to that word, by the way, fiddling. Speaking of fiddling, I think now I'm just going to start, uh, now I'm just going to start, like, fast-forwarding through this again, because this is all fiddling from this point. It's going to be hours and hours and hours, and who knows, maybe even days of fiddling. And, you know, take as long as you fucking want. Take as long as you want to make it look, you know, as nice as you want. So, let me fast forward this bit. Yeah, let me fit. Ah, uh, uh, sorry. Sorry, let's play on. I can't even goddamn talk. I'm going to be fiddling with this for the next couple of hours. So, let me fast forward for you guys. Remember when you were young. <laughs> you shone like the sun. So I've been working on this for the last, how long? Nine hours. That's kind of, that's kind of absurd. That's kind of absurd even for me, but you know what? Like, Crazy Diamond, he's the star. He's the star of our show, and he deserves a big, crazy, complex, over-the-top piece. So, you know, I think these nine hours, uh, you know, I think, I think he's, after all these nine hours, he looks pretty decent. I think I finally got into a point where I'm saying, yep. This is probably the point that I'm willing to say, uh, Crazy Diamond is done. I'm going to say this is going to be our final piece. I also kind of went, like, a little bit nuts, a little bit absurd with how many fucking layers I did. Like, that's absurd even for me. But, like, you know, whatever. I think he, I think he still looks okay. He's not perfect. Like, even now I'm looking at stuff on him and going, nah, that looks like garbage. Nah, that's, that, that there, for example, looks like shit. If I don't point it out, you guys don't know what it is I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, I'm willing to say that this is going to be... I'm willing to say this is, this is, good, this is good enough for a finished piece right here. So now, probably what I'm going to do is... Uh, do I want to hold on to these in case I want to fiddle with it later? And ideally, I don't want to fiddle with it later at all. So what I might do is go ahead and merge all my layers together. There we go. I'll just rename that to an outline so I don't get confuddled later on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my magic wand tool, which is a goddamn, you know, godsend for working with my kind of stuff. Uh, magic wand, set it to contiguous. Uh, we're going to select all of the outside of him just for the moment. And I'm going to have to go in here and like pick out some of the bits, right? Which I'm, I generally try not to do, but like, there we go. I kind of um, left some little uh, stuff in there that I got to, okay, whatever, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'll expand that by four inverse that and now i'm gonna set myself up where i call my white layer there we go that's just gonna be the absolute base of our character there we go paint bucket he's white uh is there anything that i want to like sort of get rid of very quickly there's like a little there's a little snippet in here that's uh the the magic wand tool kind of just isn't sensitive enough to pick up so there we go i'm gonna get rid of that there now you know the hard part is done the hard part is done. We've done the outline. That's what's going to take, like, that's what took forever and ever and would never bloody stop. But this, from here on in, everything gets easy. Everything gets super easy from here. One little trick that I like to use as well with my white layer is I'm going to select it. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this my black layer because then what I'm going to do is, 
I generally like to like expand. I'm gonna expand that by about eight pixels. There we go. I'm gonna make sure it's smooth because it'll look like crap. <laughs> it'll look like crap if I don't um, smooth it out first. Uh, and then, blam, black. There, now it looks like sort of the outside layer of him uh, looks super thick. And also it kind of covers up some of the like dodgy line work uh, that I did later on. And then one last little trick that I like to slap in there. I'm gonna duplicate my black layer. So I got two of the exact same one. And then I just like to tilt it a little bit. I just like to tilt it a little bit, and that way it looks like there's like a little bit of variation going on, and it helps sort of like uh, make the flow happen. It sort of like make, it sort of helps get that flow of what I'm talking about. Hey, remember like way back earlier in the episode when I was talking about like my line of action? Hopefully now that he's finished, I can sort of show it off a little better, like, you know, starting from the head. Can I, I might just, uh, ah, I guess it's too late. Uh, you can kind of see how the piece sort of like slants up along this way. So I'm hoping that, you know, you sort of get the idea of what I'm going for with that line of action stuff right there. So, let's just ditch that. Oh my god, I drew that on the fucking white layer. Of course I would. Of course I'd do something like that. That's the kind of stupid shit that I'm going to pull. But anyway, anyway, as I was saying, the hard bit's done. Now we, get to, now we get to talk about colors. Now we get to talk about colors and shading. Alright, so let's go ahead and start setting up our colors. I'm going to set this as my coals. I just like to call it coals, personally. This is going to be our base layer. This is just where our uh, absolute most basic of goddamn colors is going to be. Thankfully, because like this is all in one, uh, the whole outline is in one layer right now. Uh, I can just sort of use my magic wand tool on contiguous again. I can just select all the stuff like just from here. Honestly, sometimes it comes out a little messy, especially with sort of the um, that older brush that I pointed out earlier to you guys. Is this isn't like perfect depending on the situation, but right now. I'm just going to select the stuff that I kind of want to be this deep blue dark color. Um, I reckon I'm going to go with that. Yep. Yep. I reckon that, and that's decent enough. Um, oh, yeah. We'll get, whoops. Not that one. Definitely not that one. There we go. That's a little better. I don't have to. I don't have to be zoomed out like stupid like this. There we go. That's a little better, isn't it? Um, that'll do for now. Yeah, that'll do for now. I'll just expand that by four. I don't want to go too nuts. I'm thinking... That, that blue color on the um, on the sprite from the video game looks pretty all right, but it's not going to help sort of him stand out. I may have done a crazy diamond piece earlier on in the month that uh, helps me sort of uh, sort of get the idea of what I was going for. So I'm not going to go for the blue now. I'm going to go for this. I'm going to go for this black from the official uh, Ken Sagomori artwork. I might. Yeah, I am just going to honestly use the color picker, and I'm just going to rip colors straight from the goddamn sprite. That's how I've been doing it for all of them. Uh, this time, what I'm gonna do though, uh, I reckon I can probably push that a bit more. I'd like a little bit more saturation. So it looks a little bit extra colorful. There we go. I reckon that'll do. Set up my base layer. Just gonna use my paint bucket. Blam! That's all I gotta do to start laying down some of my, uh, my base colors. Um, I'm just gonna keep doing that for a little while longer. Um, I'm gonna want some of his... I want his armor pieces to be like crazy diamonds here, that nice sort of um, light blue color. This is just like absolute basic stuff where you can just uh, start nicking colors straight from some of your uh, reference pieces you've got. Um, how about very quickly a fast forward for you guys, because this is just going to be a little bit long and tedious, but at least it's easy. But at least it's easy. And that's a good start. Yeah, look at him now. Holy shit, look at him now. Now we're starting, to, now we can actually start to see sort of like what the final piece is going to look like. Um, there was there was a point where I decided to change up the white layer just to magenta because magenta is the most like ridiculous god awful color, which is great for when you're doing art because like if you see magenta in your art, depending, you know, or whatever like, you know, bright, obscene, eye hurting color that you want to work with, you know, when you start to do your color layers, and you can start to see sort of like all the places where, uh, where you know, stuff isn't being filled out, right? And you also got white in there and you don't want to accidentally leave some white stuff in there and leave like a whole party of um, color layer you haven't done yet because you honestly thought it was white. Uh, you know, they, having magenta helps. So now I can just like select my whole white layer, go back to my base. Now I can sort of start getting in there and um, fixing some of the stuff. Like I want to get rid of that, like that. The, um, the sort of, like, uh, magic wand tool isn't perfect. Sometimes it's not, like, 100% uh, as sensitive as you want it to. See, I didn't want that. I didn't want that crap at all. So, you know, sometimes i got to get in there and i just got to, like, erase some of these corner bits. I'll probably, like, spend a bit more time with that. 
Um, and I'll do that now. No, I won't do that now. But I will, um, now I'll start just, uh, not, not on my white layer, God. Expect to do that a lot. Expect to do that a lot. You are gonna fucking, like, you know, accidentally paint on the wrong layer a lot. It's just gonna happen. I don't care, like, you know, who the hell you are. No one is perfect. No one is goddamn amazing and perfect enough to never, ever, 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 ever paint on the wrong fucking layer. So, here we go. I just wanna... I want to start fix. I could. I could just. Yeah. There we go. Magic one's not perfect, but I'm starting to finally get like a good feel for what our final sort of um, crazy diamond piece is going to look like. Um, one thing, sort of, when I'm going for my color picking, um, you might have noticed. Uh, I generally like to take from the game sprites because the game sprites colors are always way brighter. For example, than like Ken's uh, actual art pieces here. Like that's a little bit desaturated compared to the uh, actual sprite from the game. Because funnily enough, they got to actually make the sprites like you know look crazy, super colorful, uh, really beef out the colors so you can actually see them on that dinky little screen we used to play on. Remember, man, remember way back in the nineties when you used to play on that dinky little screen and you know didn't even have colors. When I was playing, you know, Pokemon as a child, we didn't even, we didn't have any of your fancy schmancy colors. We used to play on the Game Boy. You know, we had one color. Like, four colors. Tops. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm really, I'm really excited, actually. I'm really excited to, like, get this piece done. This is going to be a really, this is a really fun, uh, this is a really fun piece to work on, actually. You know what, that, that should be it. You know, no matter what, you don't have to, like... Maybe when you were uh, watching this video, you know, you probably saw some stuff that went, why the hell is he doing that? I could do that, you know, way quicker. Yeah, fucking good. Good. You you do that. You do that and, like, show me. Show me how you did shit quicker because, like, I could always, you know, use someone just to, like, you know, give me a pointer because I'm an absolute amateur at this, you know. Oh, I might fix up some of this um, outline here. That looks a little bit dodgy. That's okay. That's okay. I knew. I knew that things were going to, you know, come out just a little bit dodgy. I could always use like a little bit of a little bit of help, you know. Someone just pointing me in the right direction, going, "Yeah, but you know, what if you did this? What if you did this?" Because it's always a constant sort of, um, it's constant, constant, continuous improvement, you know. That's how. That's the only reason I got like you know half as far as I have now because you know I kept practicing, I kept like you know looking up art tutorials from other people. I am self-taught, but that doesn't mean like I didn't you know go out of my way to look for. Um, you know, look for other people's stuff and look for advice from them. I think we're just about ready to go now that I've finished sort of, um, cleaning it up. Man, I've started like 18 conversations now and I've finished like very few of them. Don't, oh no, I didn't want to do that. Ah, oh, sometimes, sometimes that shit happens on accident. But I'm willing to say that's sort of what I want my final, yeah, oh god no. Now I've got to plug in the computer. Shit, one second. There we go, much more better. Uh, one thing I might do is I might swap that around. I might swap his eye colors. Now I want his eye colors to be the other way around. Fucking whoops. Because I'm looking at Ken's fucking art piece here. He's got white eyes, blue, yeah. I don't, I, I have not fucking studied. I have not studied how to make good, decent looking anime eyes. Because there was that one point in like Emerald version where I did actually try it for exactly one art piece, and then went, no, I can't do that. I can't do that for shit, and I can't make it look good. So screw it, I'm just gonna go with these sort of like, you know, tiny dots for eyes and call that a day. All right, I reckon that's uh, that's gonna be Crazy Diamond's first color scheme. Because what I like to do generally with the uh, Daglock series is I have sort of what I, you know, their true colors, and then like JoJo does, like how JoJo likes to um, swap up its colors a bit, um, I like to change those colors up. So now what I want to do is I want to duplicate that layer. There we go. And now I want to start messing with this to kind of come up with a crazy color scheme. Not a shiny. I don't do shiny Pokemon. I have to, I put a lot of effort in to make sure that my Pokemon aren't, you know, the shiny versions of those Pokemon. So now what I'm going to teach you about is color theory. Give me two seconds to bring up my thing. So this here uh, is sort of the color wheel um, that I use. Uh, this is not mine. This is absolutely not mine. This is actually from like some completely other dude's um, Tumblr page, I believe. And he did a really nice breakdown of sort of what the hell color theory is. Like he goes through a whole bunch of like different like variations of how to do good sort of color theory. But basically, I'll, I will link this. I will link this in the description so you guys can look it up too, because this this really helped me, especially when I was doing Emerald version. But basically, there's a scientific reason why certain colors look really good. There's a reason why, like, people always pair sort of red and green for Christmas, for example, or why, you know, yellow, orange, red always looks nice. It's partly got to do with the fact that, like, you know, 
red and yellow, you stick them together and you make orange. So you put those two colors together, it's just gonna look nice and harmonious. Or you can go like completely ape shit and you can put like yellow and blue and they are the exact opposites of each other, but it makes them like really pop out, really stand out, which is actually why uh, I can bring this up on Empoleon's design. That's why they have like, you know, all these yellow bits here um, and they pair it up next to blue because they're, uh, they're opposites of each other and therefore it actually makes each side stand out really well. I don't fucking want that. In I'm never going to bloody update you, Elgato. It's not going to goddamn happen. So there are scientific reasons why certain colors look uh, super nice together. One thing that I typically like to do, it depends, but I generally like to sort of go with a triadic um, color scheme, which is basically you pick three different colors, like look, you know, opposite yellow and blue. Or what if I wanted to do something triadic with like bright yellow, then it's going to look good if I go sort of this purpley color and this light blue color. Because all three of these colors are sort of an equal distance on the color wheel, and therefore they will all sort of pop out uh, equally. So that's sort of like the idea that I like to go for sort of a color scheme. Honestly, I'm going to wing it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I am probably just going to wing it. But, you know, let's see, let's see what we can, uh, let's see what we can come up with. I'm thinking, right, originally I was planning on just like nicking um, Crazy Diamond, JoJo's actual uh, color scheme, as my alternate color scheme. I'm also thinking maybe, like, I could go for a purple thing. Hang on, what is, what is, um... What does Crazy Diamond's actual bloody shiny sprite look like? Uh, Empoleon DP will do, just so I know that it's, um... God, Cerebi.net, you are a godsend. Cerebi.net, you are a godsend for so many reasons. Yeah, so you can see here, it's sort of the, um, the shiny for Empoleon is sort of, like, this green color. So, ideally, I kind of want to avoid making my Empoleon green. I don't want to go green, because otherwise, everyone's going to think that I'm going for a shiny, and I don't want that. I'm thinking, I might just pick out a, you know, random, I'm thinking purple. Purple would look really nice. Therefore, if we go sort of that complementary opposite, uh, you know, this nice light green is going to go well. Or, we could go triadic and, you know, I could put like orange and light green. Honestly, you know, it'll, it'll differ. It'll differ. One super easy, just fucking way to do it. I'll turn contiguous off now on my magic wand so I can select all of this. All of this whole sort of black color that I worked with. Honestly, just, you know, fucking with the hue saturation settings. Honestly, that'll do the trick. Oh, that's, that's kind of a dark color, isn't it? You can't really see what, I'm, what it is I'm talking about. But honestly, sometimes, you know, the easiest thing is just to go to your hue sat settings. Just fuck around with it. Just fuck it. Like, there, there. That's sort of the shiny color that, um, that the actual game colors kind of go with. I'm not particularly interested in that. There's some stud. I don't want... I, I just said I don't want to do... I do not want to do, um... Oh... Ooh, oh, oh, that one looks nice. Oh, that one looks really nice. I would kind of really like to do that one, but maybe let's not worry about that too much. That's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, oh, I really like, I really like sort of that one. That's a good sort of idea. That's a good sort of idea of like ideas of what you can do just to sort of come up with. Maybe I like this, but I'm thinking I want to mess with purple. So I'm going to go this nice purple. I'm just going to... And I pick out this one. I'm just going to start, you know, fucking with colors. Try and pick out the stuff that I like. I want a deeper purple than that. God. I want some nice deep purple. I want to hear some highway star coming out of my shit. And then maybe, like, you know, all my light, all this sort of bluey color. I would like that some green. I'm sort of looking at my color scheme going, yeah, green. You don't even, it doesn't even have to be perfect. Like, you know, uh, this dude's uh, tutorial uh, explains it as well. It doesn't have to, god fucking damn it. I hate Wacoms on this bloody... Microsoft photo shit is the worst. It doesn't even have to be like 100% opposite of the bloody um, color wheel. Like if it's close enough, that'll do. It'll do the trick. Don't worry about it. So, yep, I like sort of Crazy Diamond with this purple. I would like him to have sort of a greenish uh, hue on sort of that. How's that looking? Yeah, it's looking all right. How about his armor set? Let's make his armor look a nice light-ish green. So it's sort of, whoops, not that. So it's sort of close enough to um, sort of this yellow that the original uh, the original Empoleon sort of colors had. Uh, maybe one more. Maybe what I'd like to do is sort of pick out that yellow. Maybe sort of push to make it a bit lighter. Maybe push it up a little more so it's that sort of greeny yellow. That way it's sort of it's sort of oh, that's not that's not colorful enough at all. Maybe I'll just go back into my hue sat settings and I'll mess with the saturation a bit, a little bit of this. Oh, this is looking good. Oh, I don't mind this one. I do not mind sort of this color scheme. Yeah. 
Is that sort of the one I'm going with? You don't even have to make it like 100% the exact, like, the exact same color schemes. Like, sometimes I'll do shit where I'll mess with it, where I'm like, oh, that looks alright, but like, you know, I don't have to, um, make his armor set and his, um, colors here, for example, different. Maybe I want to sort of make his, um, the sort of crazy diamond armor yellow. No, no, I don't actually. No, that doesn't look particularly good. Maybe I want to, um, select this. And I'll just go with a nice big old fucking brush here and I'll just pick out the stuff instead that I want to change up. I reckon that looks alright, yeah. It looks a little over the top, doesn't it? It looks just a little bit, yeah. Maybe I'll instead sort of push that to be sort of orangey. It's still sort of, they're still like relatively close together on the color wheel. That's a little too dark for what I was thinking. Here we go. How about give this a shot? Man, that wind outside looks, this sounds goddamn awful, doesn't it? How's that? Nah, maybe not. Maybe not. That's okay. I can still, you know, mess with shit as long as I want and try to figure out sort of the color scheme that I'm thinking. You can always cheat. You can always cheat. I might just cheat right now and like flick through stuff until I go, yeah, all right, that looks, that looks all right, doesn't it? Like, oh, can I make it lighter? But can I like push for it to be more colorful? Yeah. Or I could have just gone with that crazy color scheme that my bloody um, HLS, uh, my HUSAT was telling me looked good. I reckon that's a nice color scheme right there. It looks, like, good on the color wheel. I probably shouldn't be doing bloody uh, complimentary crap like this because I still got to shade it. I still got to shade it later on. Shading? What the fuck am I talking about? Oh, I'm glad you asked. You can stay there for now, Crazy Diamond. I like that sort of alternate color scheme. That's going to look good. I'm just going to change my bloody uh, colors here just so I know. Just so I, like, know what it is I'm looking at. All right, but now we get to get into the sort of nitty-gritty of shading. So... What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure I set up my light sources. I want to absolutely be certain that I know where all my lights are about to come from. So I'll make that a nice bright color so I can see it. I'll just pick that good old um, brush there. Let's say probably my first lighting source for the first piece is going to come from there. So all my light source, like if you're like really good at it, you can do multiple light sources. I just kind of like uh, going one light source. No, it's not that I like it, it's just that I'm not good enough to try a new light source yet. But my first light source is probably going to be there, my second light source, and I'll make it a different colour again so I can sort of see where it's coming from. Uh, we'll come from there, so that'll that'll come into play later, don't worry about that one. I'll reduce that so it's not like, you know, too obnoxious or anything. But now we get to start looking at shading, because here's the big secret, okay? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how far up on the, um, you know, scale of digital art you are. The big secret is... You know what, if you put any amount of shading at all into your piece, it's automatically going to make it, like, better. It's always going to, like, you know, putting any amount of effort into shading is going to work. Now, there's a couple of options for how you might want to do shading. I'm going to name this my shade layer, and I want to make sure it's on a different layer, too. Um, let's pick out my base layer. Normally, I sort of go, like, like you know, the hugest color on this piece first and work my way downwards. That way it gets, like easier and easier as I go. Let's just sort of start small for now, just for the sake of this video. Let's just work on shading his head, for example, hey? So let's go ahead and I want to pick out that light blue on Crazy Diamond. Um, again, you can sort of color pick as well, sort of um, get the um, colors that you want to go for, but I'll tell you, probably like the best, like nicest looking way to do it, pick out both these colors so they're the same, go to that, drag that so it's sort of uh, a darker color. Drag this, push it towards like a new color. Push it so it's like, you know, it's not just, oh, a slightly different, like darker shade of the exact same color you had. Push it so that like, you know, the color cycles through and push it sort of towards like, obviously deep blue is gonna look darker visually than like, say if I tried to make the shadows like even this. I guess that doesn't look awful, but it doesn't look particularly like interesting either. So I'm gonna push to sort of make my shadow that nice sort of deep blue. There we go. I think that'd work. Now you got a couple of options. Um, that brush that I showed you guys way at the beginning, the one that I used to use for Emerald version actually, is really, really nice for doing sort of like, you know, shading at the beginning, because you get that nice sort of shading effect and you can like layer it a couple of times over and look at that, look, look, look at that, look how easy that was, look at that, look how easy that was and, and you know, you get just nice sort of soft looking layers. Layer it up as many times until you sort of go, oh yeah, that looks that looks uh, pretty comfortable right there. So that's a really nice brush to use. If you're just sort of starting out, you just make it big and you shade over the top. Um, one of the things, like you see a lot of like much better artists than me, just use these nice sort of soft, um, 
This is a good beginner brush too. This is just a default sort of soft um, shading brush. Again, that blends sort of really nicely together. Um, I was doing that for when I did way back when I was doing um, gold version and that worked, you know, well at the time, but I think I just didn't have the experience to make it look good. By the way, don't fucking shade in black. I don't care who the fuck you are. I know I used to do it. I used to do it when I was doing bloody um, gold version. Don't shade in black because it always looks like shit. Look at that. That looks pretty shit. Not unless you like kind of know what it is you're doing. And I used to like bloody like try to reduce the layer, like the opacity too, so it would look a little better. No, that doesn't look good. That like that looks all. Oh, it looks fine, I guess. But what you could do, how about I do the exact same settings? Let's do the exact same fucking settings on that. But instead, let's push to make it that sort of deeper blue uh, color from earlier, huh? What if we do that? Just even that. Just even that. Look at the difference sort of that makes. Oh, God, look at that. Yeah, I forgot. Like, I'm going to turn that off. Okay, that's a bad example. That's a bad... No, actually, let's push this up to 100. Look how much sort of, like, nicer and more interesting that looks. Compared to that, that's just like gross, not very particularly colourful, versus that, that's way better. So that's, that's your little cheat sheet right there. I don't need this layer anymore. Uh, you, I, nope, don't need any of that crap. There we go, let's push that back up to 100. Alright, so that's, that's sort of the um, nitty gritty basic ideas of shading. I'm just going to go with, I sort of wanted for platinum version a more, um, god, listen to my computer. It's getting summer, it's getting summer here in Australia, so you know, my computer's really struggling. My computer is really struggling in it. All right, I want to, I want to go with a nice hard brush. I already set up myself like that brush, um, the same brush that I've always been using, the one with sort of zero hardness. But I made it nice and big. I made it nice and big so I can do this sort of like solid shading, hard edge sort of thing. I like that sort of cell shaded look for this. One sort of thing that I generally like to do when I'm um, when I've started my shading is. I just go ham on the first layer and I just goddamn go over everything I just did again in shading. Because sort of the logic, the way I sort of picture it is like, shadows aren't a thing. They're not a literal physical thing. It's more like the light is painted onto something that's already dark there. So just, you know, for the sake of me, it helps when I start out, you know, go nuts, paint the whole fucking thing, paint my basics in. I know that my light's going to come from there, so I want to sort of like, you know, if the light's... I know the light's just going to kind of, you know, go on there first, go on there, go on there. You know, get just sort of like drafted out. Just sort of drafted out nice and early. You can fix it later. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. So that's sort of a nice way to do it. Let's just focus on his head for now. Let's just focus on his head for now. Um, that's not a hard and fast rule. Nothing in this entire video has been a hard and fast rule. You do it the way you goddamn want. You know what? I might even bloody just contiguous it up so I don't, like, go, like, on some of my other layers just yet. So there we go. Let's just make it all about this, huh? Let's just make this all about this sort of head part. There we go. Um, then I'm going to paint my light on. Again, I sort of know it's coming from, like, that direction, so... I'd say the light's probably going to fall on his head, yeah, a bit like that. There we go, that's a good start. That's a good start. There we go, we fill in the rest. I'd probably just, like, colour this in anyway, just so you can see his face. I kind of want you to see his face in this, so there we go. See, look at that. Easy and good start. I'll tell you a trick, too. You can also, like, flip your canvas. I honestly forget to do this a lot, but when you like, you know, gotten real deep into the shading part, you can flip your canvas around, too, and then um, start to look at, oh, yeah, do you like that? Oh, no, where'd my bloody selection go? Come back. That's, that's a little bit more like it. All right. Um, yeah, that's a good start. Maybe I sort of want like his, like the trident on his face to sort of shade here. There we go. I might sort of round up that um, shadow there just so it looks a little bit um, less artificial, I guess. So it looks a little bit more organic. I reckon that's a good start. I'd say um, these tridents here are definitely sort of blocking the light. Uh, coming from there, so there's definitely gonna be a thing of you know this trident is gonna you know and this one too There we go. Look at that nice and easy. We're starting to we're starting to make it uh, Look, yeah, we're starting to make him look just a little bit better. It's, it's still early days It's still early days, but don't worry about it. Maybe sort of um, You know it comes out here. This is uh, You don't have to do this, but like you know you sort of get the idea of like um you know, this thing here is casting a shadow on the rest of his helmet, and then I'll just go in there and sort of like, um, 
Ugh, there we go, clean up my lines. It's gonna be a lot of line cleaning. But don't worry, like I said, the outline part, that's the hardest part. This, this is easy and this is nice, man. I like to, I can spend hours. I can just, you know, this is easy, it gets done. Doesn't take, doesn't take particularly long. I like to just like, you know, chuck in a, you know, chuck in a couple of songs, like a playlist. And just, I will just lose it. I just, all my entire goddamn day will just disappear for me, like, you know, working on this shading stuff. How's that starting to look? Yeah, a little, a little bit goofy. That's all right. It's still early. It's still early. So, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll ditch that for now. Maybe I'll ditch, I'll probably come back to it. I'll probably come back to it. But this is a good enough start, don't you think? This is a decent enough start for, uh, sort of what I want my shading to be. Yeah, um... Ditch that too. That's just the absolute basic shading, and there's like way better artists than me, and that's kind of all they need to do. Some they just kind of go with like you know a, like one color, one color, and that's honestly all they need. I like to. I'm probably like a bit of a um. I don't know. I I I, I kind of push a little bit too much on the art side. No, no. What the fuck am I talking about? I don't know. Get used to this. Get used to this. I'm a rambler. My whole channel is bloody rambling. So that's a good start for his shading. Let's go with his tridents, actually, now that I'm looking at them. Just because I don't think this is going to be, like, complex enough for um, what it is I'm thinking to do, sort of, for this shading job. So I'm going to push that more towards the orange. This is a nice, easy one, because I already sort of drew in where all the contours on, uh, on his face is going to be. So, you know, again, no hard and fast rules. I've broken most of my rules doing, like, this art piece already. It's not that big of a deal. Don't worry about it. Look at that. Um, that's sort of a good start on sort of like the shading ideas that I want to go for. There we go. Nice and easy. And we've already sort of getting... He's already starting to look a little bit more 3D just from like, you know, two colors. Look at that. All I did was like, you know, chuck on two, two colors. His original color and a slightly darker uh, shade color. There we go. Look at that. It's nice and easy. Maybe that's all you need. What I generally like to do is I will make a second... Um, shade layer and then I will go even fucking darker I will pick an even goddamn darker color because then um, I can sort of I can sort of pick out the areas that would be even darker on the piece like I don't know just for uh, just for example like you know maybe this there we go hell I'll even like you know bring it all the way down here and that way I could sort of like you know even make even make the actual shading itself sort of look a bit more, um, a bit more 3D. Like, I've already, it's only had two layers, but maybe I want some parts of the shade to actually be even darker. It's hard to, it's hard to explain, because I don't think there's enough going on on his face here yet, just yet, to, um, sort of explain what I'm talking about. But I will typically go, you know, my base color, my shade, and that's where I start to put this, uh, these two colors together. A second layer of shading, um, to pick out, like, the stuff that I want to be even darker compared to the rest of him. And then we go a highlight layer. The last one, um, let's go ahead and go back to our original color. I know the light's coming from here, so let's make that a nice sort of pale yellow, push towards there. Um, a soft brush, depending, like a soft brush like this is really nice for, um, for like metallic parts or skin parts. Like I will often like color my skin on um, human characters, for example, with this. And look at that. You get a nice sort of soft layered effect. You've already got like three colors going on here. That's sort of where the light is hitting strongest. That's sort of the main color. This is sort of the dark areas where the um, shadows are kind of falling. Look at that. Nice, simple. He already starts to look a little bit 3D. And there's a couple of extra shading effects that I'll show off later on. But just before we're done here, how's my battery looking? I don't want to fucking leave this. I don't want to leave this plugged in while it's making noises and ruining my video. But whatever, don't worry about it. Ah. Uh, now, I have one other little trick I usually do, sort of, for the alternate color scheme um, of our characters, is what I used to do back in Emerald version, actually, for example, is um, I just sort of do that same thing. I'd shade them in a darker color um, than what they already were. Um, and that did the trick. That did the trick. But I'm sort of going for a more psychedelic look um, for Platinum version specifically. So... What I might do instead here, set up my shade layer. I've got yellow, right? So what's a good color that I could shade yellow in? Deep blue, good example. Like what about my purples here? Green, okay. So I'm kind of coming up with ideas. So I should probably push to make the colors on um, the shade colors on our alternate color scheme, maybe towards that blue. And I can mess with it. Hell, you know what? Fuck that shade layer. Let's just make a draft layer. Let's just make a, like a whole draft layer where I can just sort of mess with... Um, 
mess with colors, sort of figure out what it is I want. How, okay, that's, that's, that brush is a little too soft for what I actually wanted. There we go, let's mess with that. Like, yeah, how's that looking? Oh, I already like that. I already kind of like how that's looking, don't you think? Yeah. Also, there's a little motif I could say in there that we're kind of like, you know, returning back to Crazy Diamond's little root colors there. I reckon that's not bad. I can even sort of mess with, um, again, my HuSat. My HuSat is a goddamn amazing tool. Sort of mess with it and go, oh yeah, what looks, what looks all right? Like maybe deep red. Oh yeah, maybe purple. And then it looks kind of like, you know, the color from here, uh, from the rest of him is sort of like, um, you know, affecting the colors of the actual shade. That looks pretty all right. I don't mind that. And then here we go with our base color. I'll do the, I'll do the exact same thing here and try to like mess with it. Try to go. Oh yeah, well, uh, I got my light. I got that purple there. I might want to push to make that a bit darker, a bit more redder. There we go. And then how's that gonna look when I sort of start shading um, Crazy Diamond here? I'm not. I'm not particularly interested in making this bit look like all that good just yet. How's that looking? Yeah. Alright, looks a little samey though, doesn't it, compared to like, sort of like the rest of him, so... I uh, know, HuSat, so show me what I got. Show me sort of what I can work with. And yeah, but that, then he's going to kind of come invisible, like, compared to there, so... Come up with other ideas, let's sort of, yeah... Sort of go for mid-range, sort of push his shading a little more, so it looks a little more sort of that claret colour. Claret is a nice colour that doesn't get enough play in the world, don't you think? I like that. I sort of like that color. There we go. So I can use this sort of draft layer just to sort of mess with ideas. I'll do the same thing with the um, highlight layer as well. Let's just draft that out a little bit more. It's not generally like... I sort of... I've been doing this long enough now with the platinum characters. I think that I sort of know... I probably shouldn't do this with... Um, I probably shouldn't like go a little too ham on like both an alternate color for the shade and the highlight, but I don't know, it looks cool. How's that look? I want to pick a color that's going to be like lighter on the color wheel, I guess, to sort of go my um, highlight layer. I don't think that blue is quite cutting it. Don't think that blue is quite cutting it. Oh yeah, I'm getting some... I didn't actually mean to mess with the shade, but that's okay. I'll just uh, pick out that. There we go. But it's already starting to come up with some interesting ideas on its own. Thank you. Thank you, Mysterious Computer AI on the inside there that's sort of coming up with ideas better than I can. Um, no, I think that light blue is about as, gonna, as good as it's going to get. But we can sort of make it green, then we can sort of, again, sort of make it look like this green here on the rest of him is sort of, um, affecting it. Maybe I'll make it lighter, maybe I'll increase the shade a little bit so you can see it a little better. Nah, it's a little too light now, isn't it? Just a little bit too light. There we go. So now I'm sort of drafting out ideas for what I sort of want, you know, his crazy psychedelic alternate color scheme is going to look like. And then I can start going into it and I can start, you know, putting in my shade layers, starting messing with ideas. Uh, just as an example, I'll go into there. I'll say, oh yeah, well, um, sort of with our new with it with the second shade layer, I'm gonna go for. I'm probably gonna there we go. Push that a little bit more. Like, how's that gonna look later on? Yeah, starting to go places. Starting to yeah, I'm starting to like that. I think this is sort of a good like draft for sort of the shading that I'm gonna do. All right, so that should do it for now. That should give you the basic idea of sort of. What it is I'm thinking of going for with, um, when I start messing with his shading. I'm, I'm probably just going to redo a lot of this, honestly. But that should, uh, that should give you the basic idea of how shading's going to work. So, let's do one last great big gross montage while we get the, uh, while we get the shading down, huh? And with that, I think I'm willing to say that this this is a finished piece right here. I think that uh, Crazy Diamond is finally finished. I'm going to admit to you guys, this piece was actually quite difficult. This is I had a lot of problems um, sort of getting this piece to work. Uh, this whole goddamn arm, the entire time, outlining, shading, the whole fucking time, that arm has given me a lot of trouble. So... 
Yeah, there's a couple of things on this piece that I'm not 100% happy with. Uh, you know, I feel like I could have done better. I just couldn't quite get it to work. But you know what? That's just kind of being just doing anything creative at all. Like, you'll never be 100% happy with what you got. But I'd still say that he's good enough. I think he's, uh... I think he's decent enough. I am actually seeing one little thing that I'd like to change. I think some of this um, highlight here actually on his um, on his, on his yellow, on his trident here is actually bled through. So I'm just going to ditch that. There we go. That looks a little bad. Yeah. Oh, God. It actually spilled over to... Um, yeah. So, all right. Let's just clean that up real quick. Oh, no. Yeah. All right. I see the problem. I see the problem that happened there. So, you see? See what I mean? See what I goddamn mean? I'll never be 100% happy with this piece. But there we go. That should fix the problem just a little bit. That looks... Just a little bit better. I'm still willing to call this piece finished right here. We've got uh, our original color scheme here that I was like pretty, pretty tame on the um, on the shading here. It's mostly just slightly deeper colors of um, what his colors originally were. And then we've got our um, we've got our alternate color scheme here, which uh, during the shading I tried. I, I emphasis here on the word tried to stick to a single um, color here for the shade. Like I mostly tried to keep it red. I couldn't make red look good on the, um, on his purple body here, so I ended up just going just, like, purple. It's still good, and I think it's still, um, it still adheres to the color theory. Like, let me, let me bring up that little, uh, color theory thing real quick again. Like, yeah, like, keeping it in this sort of, um, small format right here. We've kind of got, like, we've definitely got blue on the shade here, purple on his, um, main body here. We, we bleed into these sort of reds, uh, to go into the shading, like I said. And then just sort of like complementary color, the exact opposite of that. We've got this like nice light green that I chose to make the rest of his body in that. Yellow is just sort of right next to the color wheel on him. So that's just like going to look like nice and simple and like blend with um, the rest of the piece. So I'll, it's it's kind of a little bit fudged. Honestly, I'm kind of just like fudging this explanation right now. But nonetheless, I'd say like color theory wise, yeah, he looks he looks all right. So I'm again willing to say, you know what? This is a finished piece right here. I think we're absolutely done with uh, Crazy Diamond. But I've got one last little trick on the shading part of this that's going to really help sort of uh, make the piece piece look really nice. Cause all these colors, all these shades that I've got going on, are mostly just sort of one color. Like we just got a, like a plain straight blue, and then like a deeper blue on there. That's all it is. But there's a little secret. There's a little trick that I like to use. To sort of make, um, add a lot more depth uh, to your shadows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick that grey, that nice neutral grey from the background here that I usually use. I want to go a deeper grey. I want to select my white layer so I just get the whole piece in one go. I've created a new layer which I'm calling my ambient uh, light layer. I'm going to go uh, gradient. I'm going to go this nice um, round gradient that you get. And then I'm just going to do this from my light source approximately. Bam! What the fuck did I just do? I'm just going to quickly sort of mess with it around till I get something that I kind of like. I kind of like that a little bit. And then I'm going to change this layer just from normal to overlay. Look at the difference that makes. It's a very simple little difference, but bam, look at that. I might even say, yeah, that's, um, this kind of came out a bit dark for what I want. So I'm going to bring that up a little bit. You don't have to change it too much. Actually, it like mostly does it, um... It, it, it doesn't take a lot of like change to the um to that color to, in order to make it um in order to affect the gradient you can even sort of use your um adjustments bright contrast if you wanted to but look at that already i've already got like much deeper sort of looking um shading like this part of his body still looks lighter than say like all the way down here so look at looking at that that's already a way that i've um uh, gone ahead and made the um the shade even deeper and then what i can further do Maybe I'll go ahead and use my magic wand layer here to pick out sort of all um, this arm. I want to pick out like everything on this forearm here. I'm thinking I'm going to go my outline there. Um, yeah, I reckon that'll do. And then like, you know, I can use, I can keep messing around with this layer and the bits I want and say, you know, I want to make um, his arm here look a little bit brighter. So it looks like, you know, part of the light is coming off there. So maybe I um, want to reduce that a little bit. Not too much, just so it's not like the exact same but look at that look at the difference that sort of that makes and i can do that as much as i want all along the piece i can pick out all the bits that i want to say oh maybe i want uh his helmet because it's his face and it's kind of a focal point maybe i want like his whole face here to be a little bit um brighter i say maybe not his eye because his eye is pretty um decently dark isn't it maybe i want to do that maybe i want to go ahead and make his um his face colors stand out just a little bit more how's that look at that that's a big difference already might even just go uh how about that trident's Maybe I'll do the same to that from my light source. 
Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty decent. Look at that. Look at the difference that sort of I'll turn that layer off. See? Look at the big difference that sort of makes. That kind of makes these colors here look um, a lot uh, nicer too. Then I can do it again. I can do another one. I'll call this my second ambient layer. You can stay like that for now. Now, instead of going my basic gray, I'm probably going to go orange here. Like the colors uh, don't necessarily matter too much, but definitely orange because orange is a nice warm color and all lights are generally light. And I'm going to do the same thing. Not that layer. I picked the wrong fucking layer. That's all right. There, I'm going to do the same thing again, uh, make the gradient sort of look nice, and instead of overlay, I might make that a soft light layer, and then reduce that just down to 50, or however, like, it might need more or less, but I reckon that's a pretty decent uh, color right there. Look at that, I've already, like, you know, massively affected my colors, and then on my second ambient layer there, I can mess with my hue saturation settings to sort of pick out the color that I really like that's, um... Like, this is, this is just sort of like the color of the surrounding light, if that makes sense. Like, let's picture, uh, you know, let's picture that Crazy Diamond here was, like, set in an orange room, or perhaps I'm thinking about the orange background, um, you know, that I'll probably use for his um, eye catch piece. That's sort of what I'm trying to get at, that this is now you sort of affecting what color the light in his little situation is. And I reckon, like, yeah, just the sort of um, standard orange that I picked out looks good. And look how it's affected the colors. Look at even the difference between, you know, these two. I've already got, like, a much richer looking um, black around here. Uh, I can affect that too. I can go to my, maybe my brightness and contrast. Maybe I go, oh, that's a little um, deep for me. Maybe I want to mess with the brightness. Maybe I want to sort of make the contrast. Yeah, look at that. Look at the... Look at the huge difference that that's sort of already made. I'll probably do the same thing actually to his um to his to his arm here. I feel like this arm is just gonna be a constant plague on this entire piece, but I don't know, it looks cool. Oh yeah, you might be asking, like, yeah, how did I get how did I get that sort of perspective y looking thing? It's a thing called um foreshortening. What the fuck is foreshortening? I don't know. Dude, I don't know anything about, like, foreshortening at all. I was just kind of messing with it until I got something that I liked. Um, that's probably not going to really work if it's... Oh, no, that looks, that looks pretty decent, don't you think? That looks just a little bit decent. I know it's slightly red, so I might affect that too. Or, yeah, I reckon that looks pretty... That looks pretty all right. Maybe I'll, um... Maybe I'll lighten that with my settings just a little bit. Keep up the saturation so it's still, like, decently colorful. Yeah? How am I liking that? How am I liking that? I think that's pretty nice and I've got much more sort of interesting looking shadows. They're not all going to be like the exact same sort of shadow color if that makes sense. Again, I can turn these off and you can just see the difference. If you don't like this one, for example, if you go, nah, that's a little too bloomy for me or nah, I don't think this is working, fine. Get rid of it. Fuck it. Stick with this if you want. Don't have to put any on if you want, but I, I like to do that. And I'll do the same to my alternate color layer. So what the hell did I... Oh no, I accidentally messed, I accidentally merged the wrong fucking layers. I, I merged my um, outline with one of the gradients that I put on there. Fucking whoops. Oh well, you got, no one has to know. No one has to know, because once this goes out, no one is ever going to bloody know. So let's go ahead. I don't need this layer anymore. I've, um, I don't need my little draft layer anymore. So one more time, let's go ambient one. Let's uh, make it a nice gray, a deeper gray. Uh, my light source is coming from down there. I don't. I, I probably could have done better with the light sources, honestly, because you can't really see much of a difference uh, in the shading between these two pieces. Like most most of it still kind of looks like it's all coming off this direction. Really, the only clue is sort of the head, where they, like the light looks like he's coming from below him, and he looks a little bit more menacing versus this one with lights coming off of the side. But whatever, I think it still works. I think it still works. So how am I liking the look of this? Yeah, let's uh, change that to overlay. Do I like that? Yeah, that looks pretty all right. Again, I might beef, uh, I might beef that one up just a little bit, just to make him sort of look a little less dark. There we go. I like that. Look at the difference between these two already. It's subtle, but it's there. I reckon that looks pretty all right. Um, all right, and yeah, I'll do one more for the uh, ambient two, the color layer. I don't know what's a color that I think I'll. Yeah, I'll just stick with the orangey or even yellow again. It's not that big of a deal what this color is yet until you um, mess with it and find, sort of, you know, mess around for yourself and go, oh yeah, this is sort of the one I like. So let's make that a soft light layer. Oh, that looks nice already. That already looks pretty nice to me. I think that yellow is actually a little bit too, um, that yellow is a little bit too bright for him. It sort of drowns out the rest of it. Yeah, we're getting somewhere now. Now we are getting somewhere. Do I feel like 50? Do I feel like it needs to come down even lower. Doesn't need much, just needs sort of enough. Yep, I am liking that a lot. One more time, sort of mess with my hue set to see if there's like any other colors that I like. 
This whole piece has mostly just been me, like, winging it. This whole piece has mostly just been, like, me making it up as I go along. Yeah, you know what? It's not a bad way to do things. Not a bad way to do things at all. I reckon, yeah, the yellow sort of that I picked out um, earlier already looks pretty nice. I could beef up the saturation a little bit. Do I want to make it, make it a little bit darker? Yeah, I'm thinking that. Look at that. Look at that. He looks. Or he already looks pretty nice and menacing. I'm going to cheat a little bit because I fucked up on that one layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick out his head on like the other bloody color layer. Because I'm smart like that. Um, is that everything? Have I picked out uh, everything on him? I think so. I think, yeah, that looks pretty alright. Um, go back into there. Maybe I'll go back to this and I'll try and... Um, I'll try and brighten up his head a little bit. Because his head looks like it's a little bit in the dark there, don't you think? Don't you think just a little bit? Yeah, it's it's subtle, but it's there. It's subtle, but it's there. There we go. So, again, look at the difference that this sort of makes. Blam. Already the colors look a lot more richer. Already we sort of get the hints of where the shadow is going. So, with that, I reckon I'm willing to say uh, our crazy diamond piece is absolutely finished now. I'll go into my square selection tool. I'll sort of pick, I'll sort of try and get everything in one go if I can. But try to also sort of... Minimize the space just for the sake of file size. There we go. Then I can boop, turn off my background layer from earlier. Crop that. And bam. There we go. That's it. We're pretty much done. I don't need that layer anymore. I can just sort of turn off this layer back on and on. And then I can just sort of save that and uh, have a finished piece. So there we go. That's sort of my tutorial on how it is that I actually do all the sort of um, art pieces for this channel here. So, I I basically broke every single one of my rules. Like, almost every single one of those rules that I tried to set up in this video for you guys, um, trying to teach you sort of how it is that I do this. But, you know what? The end result looks great. I think the end result looks pretty damn alright, don't you think? Um, do I have anything else to say? I don't know, not really. What, what else do you guys need to know? Not that much. Honestly, I think I've sort of um, covered everything. Just sort of, you know, keep up the practice. You don't have to spend fucking like 12 hours on a piece like I might have done for Crazy Diamond here because I went a little bit complex. You know, just, you know, start simple and work your way up, I definitely say. Um, uh, yes, one definite piece that I wanted sort of on that hour thing. Uh, you know, there's definitely a, if you get really, really, really good at this, you could probably do what I did in half the time, but there's also sort of like this little, um, thing I learned of like, as you sort of get better at doing this stuff, it takes longer because you're spending more time on stuff. You realize you get a better view for, you know, what looks good and what doesn't, um, if that makes any sense. So, you know, don't be, don't be, don't be too worried about how long you spend on a piece, you know? Don't feel like you have to get something amazing done in two hours. If you want to spend, like, you know, a week of your life working on something, or if you want to just spend, you know, uh, a couple of hours on it, a couple of minutes on it, if you're that good, I don't care. I'm not an arc. I'm not going to make all the rules for you. So that's it. I think I'm done. I think I'm 100% done with this piece. Crazy Diamond is ready to go for our Platinum Series. So... Since I've been ripping off Bob Ross for like this entire video, let me just wrap up by saying, uh, what's the worst Bob, Bob Ross impression I could put on for you is, happy painting and God bless my friends.